Bye-bye, bye-bye, What's going on, you two? You leave her alone, please. What's the matter, you dyke or something? Leave her alone. And the alleged assault took place last night. That right, Miss Barnes? Yeah. The bastard grabbed me. wouldn't leave me alone. Mm, where was this? My tits. <laughs> Hurt, too. <laughs> now, where did the alleged assault occur? <laughs> What's all this alleged stuff? I didn't make it up, you know. I've got witnesses, all too. All right, we'll come to that later. What location did the incident take place? In the pub. How long had you been at the pub? Oh, not long. We just dropped in for a drink after we saw a movie at St David's. It wasn't his mates were already there, smashed off their faces. It was Malark's first training session for the season, so we thought we'd swing by the pub afterwards and grab a couple of beers. And there's a big practice match coming up for the pre-season, so we wanted to relax, talk tactics, you know? So what happened then? Well, then uh, we'd had a couple of beers, and the girls wandered in. Now, they were drinking those cocktail thingies, uh, the orgasms. And they were, you know, carrying on a bit, dancing and that. Well, I mean, they're turned on by the smell of sweat and jock straps. let's face it. So you're saying what exactly? Well, I'm saying that, that that little tart Mandy Barnes was shaking her boobs around in my face. What am I supposed to do? Exercise a bit of self-control. Boss, Warren's father's here. Hey, Tom. I believe you got my boy in here. What's this silly young bugger been up to now? We're asking him a few questions in relation to an incident at the Imperial last night. Mm, tied one on, did he? What's the damage? Actually, he's been accused of sexual assault. Mm, boys will be boys. Who's doing the accusing? Mandy Barnes. Oh, you're not serious. Oh, come on, give the kid a break. You've changed your tune a bit. Well, the boy's just starting to come good, you know. He's living back at home, working hard in the business. Have you seen him play? Turning into a bloody good footballer. Then the sooner he learns to keep his aggro for the footy field, the better. I'll have a talk to him. Not good enough, I'm afraid, Jim. Sexual assault's a very serious matter. Yeah, but Mandy Barnes. Look, the boy's just got engaged. Andrew Petrenko's youngest. She's a pretty little thing. He doesn't need this. It's up to Miss Barnes. Girls just want to have fun, you know. We were enjoying ourselves, dancing, fooling around. Now, uh, could Mr Tully have misunderstood your uh, wanting to have fun? If you mean, did I ask for it? No way. Was it tell he's always had trouble keeping his hands to himself? It's just that the other girls this happened to wouldn't tell him where to get off. Mm. How's it going? Well, Miss Barnes is just about to uh, make a formal complaint. The way Warren tells it, it sounds like it was just a bit of fun that got out of hand. Perhaps if he made a formal apology. Oh, look, Sergeant, I'm not the first girl he's groped. But I'm the first one to stand up to him. I'm not backing down, OK? So, with this stage show tonight, mm. what does Justin DeCarlo actually do? Oh, I saw him years ago. He's an illusionist. You know, stage hypnotism, sleight of hand, card tricks, oh. that sort of thing. He's quite good. Oh, God, what's he doing in Mount Thomas? <laughs> Little bitch went for me. I ought to do her for assault. You can't do a woman for assault, son. A man would be a laughing stock. You're not going to get away with it this time, mate. I've just signed a complaint. Miss Barnes has decided to proceed with the charge. With her reputation, you've got to be joking. It'll have to be investigated, but in the meantime, Warren, you're free to go. Sorry to keep you waiting. No, that's OK. I was just wondering if you lot were going to the footy benefit. Yeah, I am. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, going. Yeah, I am. Uh, PJ and I are going. Yeah, well, I thought if you were taking a table for the show, you wouldn't mind if I had maybe sat with you? I don't oh. really know all that many people here as yet. Oh, what a good idea. We'll look forward to seeing you there. And so I've put you in room six, which is just at the top of the stairs, and you turn right and let me know if you need anything else. Well, a nice cold beer would go down well. Sure would. It's oh, a, oh, it's, it's Thank you. a long drive from Swan Hill. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. DiCarlo was performing there last night. Uh, Justin, please. I like to feel I'm amongst friends. Well, we should have a good house for you anyway. I'm delighted to hear it, and thank you for providing your premises. Oh, of course. We do what we can for the mudlarks. <laughs> this way. Hi, Maggie. Oh, hi. Uh, Chris, I'm just here to get a statement about uh, the incident last night. Sure, sure. Come here, Justin. 
Justin. Uh, Justin DiCarlo, who's doing the entertainment for tonight. I'd like you to meet Constable Maggie Doyle. Yeah, nice to meet you, Justin. Enchanté. <laughs> and I hope to have the pleasure of your company tonight. I find it's always as well to get on the right side of the law. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps we should go and uh, discuss my introduction. It's certainly this way. Oh. Thank you so much. Excuse us. This way, Justin. Now, Chris, Mandy Barnes is claiming assault. Did you see what happened last night? Yeah, he made a grab for her and mm -hmm. she kneed him where it hurts. She seemed to know what she was doing. Well, Warren Tully, on the other hand, get this, is claiming provocation. So, I mean, do you have an oh, opinion? Look, you know, they'd all had a few drinks and it was a hot night so the girls weren't exactly overdressed. And you know what they're like at that age. They're shining out at the boys. They're all giggly and silly and it's easy enough to misconstrue. So the girls could have been leading the boys on? Maybe, but you know was has got a reputation for being just a bit direct in his approach, you know? I'd say there'd have to be a fault on both sides. Mandy Barnes isn't exactly the shy retiring type, oh, she's either. She's entitled to say no, though, isn't she? Yeah, but, I mean, if she's leading him on, then it's... Oh, he doesn't take much leading on. One day he's going to go too far and we'll have a rape to deal with. Oh, come on, Was is not like that. Maybe not when he's sober. He's a good mate and he's a brilliant football player. <laughs> and that excuses him manhandling a teenage girl, does it? Did I say that? All right, all right, that's enough. Cooper, he's your mate. Speak to him. Just in case he thinks being a footy hero gives him special privileges. Well, what about this assault charge? Are we going to go ahead with it? It's been a formal complaint. We have to look into it. Unless Miss Barnes decides to drop it. Perhaps a sincere apology from the offender might go some way towards persuading her. Soph's already been on me back, nagging me half to death. She, she went to school with Mandy. Reckons I should have had more sense. Well, she's got a point, hasn't she? Are you on her side? You want a hand? Did I say that? Well, no. Good. Yeah. Thanks. Look, Was, there's no easy way to say this. I just reckon you should lay off the beers. Oh, for mate. Look, we all do stupid things when we're charged. Oh, yeah, right? like getting up the town all quick. Yes, like footprints on it. I remember that. Mate, I'm serious, all right? And so is Croydon. That's the problem. Oh, what, a, what about this, uh, this assault charge thing? Yeah, you know, it's would be pretty dark of me if I have to go to court. Well, no promises, but if you stay sober and stay out of trouble, it'll help a lot. It'll help? Yeah. All right. All right, I'll have to drink. Not like as you said. Good. You going to do tonight? Yeah, shout you an orange juice. Good day, young Adam. Hey! Come keep an eye on my bad lad, have you? <laughs> you know, Sophie, don't you? Fiance? Yeah, of course. Brother Steve? Steve! Steve! Steve. 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 This is their parents, Helen and Andrew Patenko. Adam Cooper, who made him a son. Warren says you've ordered him to behave himself. I don't know about ordered. I just had to thank you. He listens to you. You're a good influence. <laughs> if I say anything, it's all oh, so don't mad. So. Oh wow! Guess it got done such a great job and I recognise the place. Hello. Yeah. Oh, What's yeah. like she's go this party yeah. catering? Oh, she's put a lot of effort into it. Of course, sure? uh, capital is always the problem for small businesses. And how is your small business? Going? <laughs> it's getting better. I can even afford the occasional night out. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, can I get you a drink? Yes, Just something to eat. Uh, apparently, the uh, the chef recommends the party pies and the sausage rolls. Oh, oh, it's a footy do party pie and a cold beer, please. I thought, I thought Tom was going to give you the night. Off well, you know, someone's got to crack a few heads. Yeah, you crack them, I fix them. It's a great party. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the special entertainment for the evening. I can promise you laughter, mystery, and a truly magical time. Hey! 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 On behalf of the Mudlarks Committee, it is my great pleasure to give you Justin DiCarlo! for my lovely assistant. <laughs> <laughs> that number with the 
silver globe floating through midair. How do you think he does oh, that? Oh, that's all Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> for the next part of my act, I'm going to need some volunteers. Gail, my dear. <laughs> I've seen Gail look so happy, you know. Oh, come on now, don't be shy. Don't I can me. see the lovely Constable Maggie Doyle out there. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, Nick. No, 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 I'm on duty, I can't do that. Oh, on your, yeah. oh, you well, this is supposed to be a football club benefit, so where are all the footy players? Oh, yeah. oh, One more, the lucky last. Who's it going to be? That bloke there, the old bloke there. Yeah. Yeah. You should take your mudlarks coat. Yeah. That fella for the old. Yeah. 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 Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse me, girl. Hey. 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 Sit down, please. Make yourselves comfortable, and we'll begin. <laughs> Thank you. I think we'd better save the young lady's uh, reputation. <laughs> and now, I want you to think of somebody in the audience you really, really fancy. And they've just told you they feel the same way about you. So go to them and give them a big kiss. What up? Just kiss me, mate. Hey, what? You heard? In front of half the bloody town. You! Bastard! Oh, Come oh, here! Oh, 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 Take your part and send out. you home to mummy! Right. I'm gonna kill you, All you All right, bastard. ladies and gentlemen, I think that about bastard. winds up tonight's entertainment. There he is, the wide receiver of Matt Thomas. my the love this fair. morning. Look, Rack, oh, I'm going to put it in was joking. He was joking, clowning around. I was joking, I was, too. Oh, he was, he? Boss he? was too what? Well, you were only pretending to be under the spell of Marvin. Oh, is that why you were kissing Sally's hand? Yeah, we all saw that. I remember a night. That good, huh? Darling, is he a good kisser? Hey, hey. Did he slip the tongue? Um, How'd he taste? Oh, you have the bacon hey, and gravy? On, come on, this is a storm in a teacup. Oh, yeah. Nobody takes that sort of evening seriously. It's yeah. a chance to let your hair down and have a bit yeah. of fun. Yeah. Soon it's forgotten about the better. Do, 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 uh, do, do, yes, do, I know. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. I got a message you wanted to see me? Yes, that's right. Uh, would you like to step into my office? Is it going to take long? You're already up on one assault charge. Last night could make it two if Mr. DiCarlo oh, chooses to press ahead. It made me look like a fool in front of everyone. I can't just let him get away with it. Well, there should be a law against that or something. You volunteered, as I recall. So did I. And Constable Doyle. We look pretty silly too, I understand. The sooner this is forgotten about, the better. Was wait up, will ya? You don't believe that crap, do you? I'm no bloody poof that. Now, look, I know. Everybody knows you're as straight as a dog. I'm beating the girls off with sticks. Yeah, mate, yeah. Everyone will just think you were joking, all right? Like wearing a tutu on cup day. Crying, crying, the old man went spastic. That bastard magician just want to punch him out. Well, you can't, You right? to do stuff like that. You, you, you remember like people said. do stuff like that? Croydon will have to charge you if you go and punch him out. Oh, what am I supposed to do then? Well, look, I'll look into it, OK? I'll do what I can, but in the meantime, don't do anything stupid. Stay away from DiCarlo. The best thing anybody can do, including you, is to let it go. The sooner Warren calms down, the sooner everybody will forget about it. But, boss, he's so furious. If he runs into DiCarlo, he's likely to smash him oh, or something. Man. Or, look, DiCarlo's finished his act. Can't we just persuade him to get out of town or something? Get serious, Cooper. The man's done nothing wrong. Conduct likely to cause a breach of the peace. Oh, How's that? Get out of here and do something useful. Now the custard slice from the brown owl. 
Oh, uh, guess what, Hot Lips? We've all colluded in an offence by attending last night's performance at the Nick, pub. get on with it. Now, you see, the question is, should we just throw ourselves in the slammer and get Chris to deliver the all race right, of the right, day? You've or... got our attention. What, what have you found? <clears throat> Under the provisions of the 1965 Psychological Practices Act, it is an offence to practice hypnosis unless you are a member of the medical, psychological or dental profession. So unless Mr De Carlo is actually Dr doctor. De Carlo. Yeah. We've got him. Yeah, hold your horses. I, th there are stage hypnotists all over the place. When was the last time you saw one charged under Well, you the see, act? the trick is to actually prove hypnosis took place. I mean, was the person just playing along with, the, you know, to tooting or was he actually under the influence? At least we've got grounds for having a word yeah, all with All right, him, all right, but not you. Schultz McKinley, you go, but don't get heavy. Just warn him that Was is not a happy man. If he's got any sense, he'll take the hint and move on. Oh, hello, Dash. Wasn't it a great show last night? Yes, it certainly got everyone talking. Look what Justin gave me as a thank you present. Isn't it beautiful? Don't you normally wear a gold watch? Oh, yes, but this is so much smarter and more modern than the old thing of Mum's. Well, perhaps the constable has more old-fashioned tastes. Mm. <laughs> How can we help you? Oh, we were just wondering, sir, if you realise that stage hypnotism is contrary to the provisions of the 1965 Psychological Practices Act. <laughs> that old chestnut. Now, nobody has been charged under that act in a decade. I, I suggest you have a chat to the DPP and they'll explain why. I don't know why you're trying to spoil things. We raised over a thousand dollars last night. Everyone had a wonderful time. Not everyone. That young man you hypnotised last night is still very upset about it. Oh, I think you'd have difficulty proving I hypnotised anyone. You see, look, I'm an entertainer, you know, an illusionist, all smoke and mirrors. <sighs> well, just the same, Mr. DiCarlo. I imagine I'll be moving on after your show's finished. Oh, no. Um... Last night was such a great success, I thought I'd ring the St David's RSL about booking Justin there. Charming town, charming people. I hadn't planned on moving on immediately. You better take that spell off me or whatever it is you've done. Come on, 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 come Hypnosis is just a state of relaxation where the mind is more suggestible. There's nothing supernatural about it. I'm not saying that what Mr. DiCarlo does is ethical or even safe. But I do know he can't force somebody to do something that goes against their basic nature. But hang on. Was it he's not gay, is he? I mean, Mandy Barnes wants us to charge him with sexual assault. She's not exactly a bloke. Adam, does the term overcompensation mean anything to you? Look, whatever way you look at it, Warren Tully's relationship for you has a sexual element. <laughs> look, look, what is the problem? You're sexually inclined towards women. It doesn't mean you can't have female friends. I really wouldn't worry about it, you know? Not, not at least until he starts inviting you on a nice weekend away. Thanks, Zoe. That De Carlo bloke was too smug by half boss. He just about dared us to find out if he'd done anything illegal. Which makes me wonder whether he might have had a brush with the law before. Well, I reckon that business with the watch is sus. Gail Russell would not be seen dead with the plucky watch. So you think he's hypnotised her into believing in something special? Well, how would you prove that, though? Well, I mean... check to see if there have been any complaints about misappropriated or damaged goods after one of his shows in the past, for starters. Maybe. Can I help you? Oh, was it Tully was bad enough, but this is ridiculous. Uh, Sergeant Corden, can you issue a notice or something? What's happened? Oh, it's a bloody show last night. Justin de Watts has me doing a strip. Now every human Matt Thomas is calling after me to get my gear off. I've had enough. Come on in and tell Constable McKinley who they are. We'll try and warn them to lay off, all right? Uh, PJs. Oh, uh, right, just three more. What was that all about? Oh, just somebody else unhappy about last night's jump up and make a fool of yourself in public so-called entertainment. So you've got your wish, though, Key Perrette. We're going to prize open the closet of Justin DiCarlo and see what skeletons come from. I thought you out. said it was best to leave it be. As yeah. far as Warren Tully's concerned, I still think it's best. If he'd have just laughed it off, it would have been forgotten by lunchtime. Yeah, what does your mate do, though? Comes in, drunk as a fiddler's, has a go at DiCarlo, I could, I could tell him to go home and sober up. And he is your mate, Cooper. Can't you get through Hey, me? listen, we're not that close, all right? That's not the impression I got last night. Listen, if he's got problems, yeah. it's none of my business. Did Doc Hamilton have anything useful to say? Not really. 
All right, off you go, see if you can find him. And this time, make sure he understands. He is to stay well clear of DiCarlo. Understood? Understood. You've got a broken nose and probably a couple of broken ribs too. You mm. have to do an x-ray. Mm. Oh, it's all right. There's nothing a couple of aspirin is soaking long hot bath mm. wouldn't fix. I don't think so. Yes, yes, I know. You mm. just want a couple of words. Can you uh, tell me who did that to you, mate? No, no. Didn't see him. But you're on the scene. What about you? Yeah, it's all right. I don't, I don't want to make a complaint or anything. All right, well, Constable Cooper, do you want to have a chat to your mate here, please? Yeah. You think you know somebody, right? Oh, God, you're not still on about Wazza, eh? Yeah. Oh, come on, Adam, he's the same bloke as he was a week ago. Who cares if he's straight or gay? Well, I'd be lying if I said it didn't matter. Okay, see you to Mount Thomas Station. Mount Thomas Station? Yours is a disturbance, possible domestic at 33 Baronia Road, Mount Thomas. Complainant is a neighbour, Mr Rowe received. On our way, VKC, ETA, three minutes. But I swear I'll right, Steve. I'm sure Warren doesn't want any trouble, do you, mate? You heard him. Get the hell out! We're mates. You don't have any mates in Mount Thomas, fag. Not anymore. <laughs> All right, mate. <laughs> oh my God! Hey, 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 hey. Go! Get out of here! I'll show you. I'll show you all. I'm just saying, it was pretty gutless. What was I supposed to do? You're supposed to stick up for him in front of that rednecked yacht. He was creating a disturbance. I was doing my job, no, right? No, Adam, you were afraid that if you told Steve to watch his mouth, he'd call you a poof de lover. Here we go. Um, Justin DiCarlo. <laughs> Would you believe his real name is Charles Flynn? Charlie Flynn, and there's nothing else on him. Not even a ticket. No, he's a model citizen, according to Disc. Uh, shall I get on to Gail Russell about her mum's watch? No, no, no. She's probably going to draw at home somewhere. Boss? <sighs> Sally, what can I do for you? Oh, I think you did quite enough last night. <laughs> Magistrate's court. That outstanding matter. I need copies of some witness statements. Hey, uh, come on in. I'll make you a cup. No, no. Um, give me a buzz when the copies are ready and I'll buy you a cappuccino at the Paragon. Uh, well, my shout. Uh, what about uh, later in the week? She's definitely a fine-looking woman. Isn't she? You don't say. Past the hand-kissing stage. Oh, boss. really? If you ever want a lesson, there's an old Yeah, yeah, yeah. The old master himself. You're right. Of course. What about? I could have stopped those guys from bashing Wazza. What guys? Steve and the others. Why did you let them get away with it? Wazza didn't want them charged. Adam, I, I can't believe that you would condone poofter bashing. I don't condone poofter bashing. But you just stood there. 
Well, what am I supposed to do about that? I don't know anything you can think of. You know, we're police. We're supposed to be there so that people don't have to live their lives in fear. Yeah, you're right. <sighs> Mount Thomas 208 to VKC. We have a crashed car. Stand by for a sit rep. Someone in it. It's Justin DiCarlo. Internal injuries, loss of blood. Zoe reckons it'll be a while before we get any sense out of him. All right, leave McKinley there in case he comes round. You better get back here. Mount Thomas Station of VKC, back on channel. Well, we'll see what AIS has to say, but if he was forced well, off... Well, Hamilton spoke to a mate of hers who reckons this the Carlo blokes into creating a bit of psychological havoc. Now, if that's true, we could have suspects from here to Melbourne and beyond. Well, he's not universally loved by any means. Even Gail Russell threatened to kill him. Yes? Here you go, Mrs Russell. We'd like to talk to you about Justin DiCarlo. Oh, that bastard. I've got nothing to say. Sorry, but he's been involved in a serious car accident. Good. He claims he was run off the road, do you? Know anything about that? Why should I? Well, Gail, we understand that you had an argument with Mr. DiCarlo earlier today and you were heard to threaten him. It was the heat of the moment. I, I was angry. All right. Why is that? It was a personal matter. Do you mind if I took a look at your car? Uh, OK, it's um, round the side. Thank you. Is he badly hurt? Yeah, pretty bad. He's still unconscious. Uh, Mrs. Russell? AIS think there was a bull bar involved. Well, Gail doesn't have a bull bar. Oh, and the damage to her car's actually quite minor. It's the sort that you'd get from pulling out of a car space at speed. So she's in the clear. So what's she hiding? Well, why don't I have a chat to her? I think if it's uh, off the record, she might be able to tell me what's been going on. All right. Yeah. And you want to tell me what the argument was all about? It started when I realised I wasn't wearing my mother's watch. We were having lunch and uh, I looked at my wrist and there was this cheap plastic thing. I remembered that I'd given him mum's watch on stage for one of his tricks. So I asked for it back. He laughed and said that I'd given it to him. I said, not permanently. And he said, yes, for services rendered. He was awful, gloating and laughing at me. And then I started to remember things. Like flashbacks. Of what? I spent the night with him, you know. But I keep remembering things. Things I said and did. Things I'd never dream of doing. I can't get them out of my mind. So shit. Listen, Gail, after the stage show had finished and in all the confusion, do you recollect Mr DiCarlo bringing you out of that hypnotic state but back to normal? Bastard. He kept me hypnotised, didn't he? I uh, heard you got Gail Russell here. You made that scumbag DiCarlo being run off the road? News travels fast, doesn't it? If we did have Mrs Russell here, it would be our business, not the town's. I came in to tell you it wasn't her that done it. Of course, if you don't want to know, I'll just... Mandy, if you've got information for us, just say so. I was on that bit of road this Arvo. I saw his car up against a tree. And you didn't stop to help? After what he did to me, I reckon I've had to force myself. But there was no need. A dirty great tow truck was pulled up not far away, so I figured he'd stop and kept on going. You still should have reported it. I'm here, aren't I? Anyway, the point is, Gar Russell's car was nowhere on that road. And I was thinking, maybe the tow truck hadn't just stopped to help, maybe it had caused the smash. Especially when 3SD said it probably wasn't an accident. Can you describe the truck? No, tow truck's a tow truck. But it had a sign on it. MTS. 
I know why you're here. I don't know where he is. I don't care. Uh, we likely to find Warren at home there, Jim? No, he didn't come home last night. And it wouldn't worry me if he never did. That's a bit rough, Jim. I thought you would have been glad to see the last of him. Mate, can you tell us where we can find him, please? No. If he's got any decency, he's probably left town. Why? Oh, there's just a matter we want to talk to him about. I'm not that silly tart Mandy Vaughan still wanting to press charges. That'd be a joke. No, it's about his possible involvement in a motor accident. The hypnotist? Word around town is some public-minded citizen ran the bastard off the road. Well, you don't want to talk to Warren about that. Do me a favour, he wouldn't have the guts. I just don't see how Wasn't could have done it. That's because all. he's a mate of yours. No, because he hasn't yeah. had time. Right. Look at it. He's yep. been in here complaining to us, he's been beaten up, he's been to hospital. And he's just had a huge row with his fiance who's broken off. Well, that's engagement. motivation enough, isn't it? And he has had enough time to go to his dad's yard, grab one of his trucks and go looking for the car and run him off the road. But Nick, that's not like Wazza. <laughs> Look, he might take a swing at the bloke, but he's not going to run him off the road. It's too calculated. 3 Mount Thomas Station. Mount Thomas Station? Yours is a man at Mount Thomas football label behaving strangely. Alcohol involved. Like no sign of weapons received. Go away! Leave me alone! Go on, Mr Tully, come down. That roof's not safe. Not safe. Well, let's come down. Let's have a talk. Come on. Not safe. That's the whole point. I'll ride you for help. Not safe. He doesn't fall first. Yeah, I'm going to go up. Steve, I'm going to say. Looks like I've got AIDS. He reckons I've given. He's, he reckons I've given Sophie AIDS. Not safe. Ha. Oh. What is it to talk about? Stop. I'm gone. What are you doing here? What are you doing up here? I just, I just want to talk to you, mate. And if you're not going to come down, then I have to come up, don't I? That's what mates are for. Oh, so we're still mates, are we? Even though... What, even though you're gay? <laughs> yeah, gay. Yeah. Nancy boy, queer, fag, yeah, but you still was a... You s... Mate, you were the only person who supported me when I got out of hospital. You were there for me when I was crying my eyes out. And I haven't forgotten that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why you stopped those mongrels from kicking the crap out of me, isn't it? Well, was I was wrong, all right? It was a mistake. That, for that, I'm sorry. Everybody's sorry. Mate, look out there. What do you see? No, I'm serious. Look out there. Small town. Exactly. Exactly. A small town. With small-minded people. But, mate, if you could go beyond that, you would see so much more. There's a whole world out there. And there are places where it's okay to be gay. Come on, mate. Give me a hand. Come on, Was. Come on, mate. Give me a hand. That's it. Come on. Now, that was quick service. Dr. Hamilton said you wanted to talk to us, sir. Yeah. Find the maniac who did this to me. Could you tell us what happened? His truck came up behind me. and was tailgating. I tried to let him pass me. He bumped me off the road. I think the rest should wait till tomorrow, PJ. Is my gear all right? Would you like us to check for you? Yeah. You're wasting your time. He hasn't come back. Oh, we know where your son is, Mr Tully. Well, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Jim, he tried to kill himself. He's in hospital. Didn't succeed then. We're still pursuing our inquiries into the accident of Mr. DiCarlo. Does your son have access to those tow trucks in the yard? 
All the drivers have keys. And he took a set with him when he left? I wouldn't know. Well, we'll need to look at your tow trucks. We'll also need to look at your logbooks and your rosters. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'm suggesting that you're trying to run Justin DiCarlo off the road. Now, we're looking at a couple of charges here, mate. Drunk and disorderly, dangerous driving, assault, attempted murder. So why don't you just stop wasting my no, time? No, no, Why don't you go easy on him? He's having a really rough time. Warren, basically, we know that you're in Mount Thomas this afternoon because you were involved in a disturbance at the Petrenko household. Now, you want to tell us where you went after you left there? Oh, I went down to the Imperial to find that bastard hypnotist. But he'd left. OK, well, where'd you go then? Uh, no, really, I just drove. Where'd you go? Who'd you see? I went down to... I went down to One Tree Rock. I was going to jump off. I didn't have the guts. Hence the Bundy and the pills? Yeah. Mm. I... I didn't even have the guts to get the old man shot and blow my brains out. <laughs> Booze and tracks. Did it like a bloody girl. I couldn't even get that right. Well, you should think about this, Warren. A tow truck was seen at the accident site, mate. And you drive a tow truck. A lot of people drive tow trucks. Yeah? But who else had a motive? Jim. Hospital said Warren's here. That's right. Didn't think attempted suicide was on the books anymore. Attempted murder is. Detective Hashem's interviewing him now. Attempted murder? Of Justin DiCarlo. He came in to make a full confession. He couldn't have done that. Well, he says he did. Using one of your trucks. I was driving one of Dad's trucks. I saw that bastard, DiCarlo, and uh, I drove straight at him. You drove straight at him? Yeah, he swerved, his car ran off the road and straight into a tree. Oh, mate, you know, <laughs> really, I mean, there is one thing wrong with this story. I've told you everything. Yeah, well, you said earlier that you drove straight at him. That's right. See, the problem is <clears throat> Mr DiCarlo's car was shunted from behind. That slimy charlatan ruined my boy's life. If he hadn't come to Mount Thomas... Warren might have taken longer to realise he was a homosexual, but as I understand it, DiCarlo simply brought to the surface what was already there. Yeah, maybe. That's what his mother says. But it's hard, Tom. I mean, this means no wedding, no grandchildren. How am I supposed to hold my head up? What's more important? Losing face or losing your son? A small town, Tom. So, what happened? Oh, I knew Warren wouldn't be in to do the spotting run, so I took the truck out myself. I saw DiCarlo's wagon with his kit in the back, and I lost it. Couldn't help myself. Uh, excuse me, uh, boss, we've got a problem. Maybe not. Mr Tully's just confessed to driving the truck that ran DiCarlo off the road. Son, why did you bloody well confess to something you didn't do? If you, if you have to ask, you'll never understand. No, I never will. Mr Tully. Warren, you're free to go. Uh, Constable Cooper will run you home if you like. De Carlo. It's five people's lives at least he's turned upside down. There's not a damn thing we can oh, do. I don't about. know about that, boss. This is Gail Russell's watch. I found it in De Carlo's possessions. He'll claim misunderstanding, petty theft at most. Well, then there's the sexual assault on Gail Russell, boss. She could have been charged with rape. Rape? Right. She told me off the record that uh, he did some pretty weird things to her while she was under hypnosis. Without her actual consent? Seems like. Well, you get him on that. What are we waiting for? Rape? That's ridiculous. Mrs Russell doesn't think so. She's lodged a formal complaint. Well, she didn't complain at the time. The woman was all over me. Oh, yes, because you hypnotised her, didn't you? You'll have the devil's own job trying to prove that. I've told you before, the stage act is just that. An act. You weren't hypnotised, neither was the sergeant, were you? 
It's well known that hypnotism can't make the subject do anything contrary to their basic nature, right, Doctor? That's the generally accepted position, yes. However, it would be possible to plant a post-hypnotic suggestion in a form that's acceptable to the subject's basic nature. Yes, you'd just need to be a pretty shrewd and unethical assessor of human personality. Mrs. Russell's seeing a counsellor, I understand. Yes, yes, one who's a medical hypnotist as well. The case will never get to court. Or maybe or maybe not. But between now and whenever, Mr. DiCarlo, there's time for an awful lot of negative publicity. Perhaps you should stick to, uh, what did you call it before? Uh, illusion? Smoke and mirrors? Well, it's, it's going to take a bit of time. But things are going to be better in Melbourne, mate. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to take a bit of time. Get a new father, new family, new career, new life. Yeah, all right, I didn't say it was going to be easy, but I still think it'll be worth it. Yeah. Doc Hamilton's given me a referral to someone in Melbourne and a name of a couple of organisations she thinks can help. Mate, it's going to be OK. Well, if it isn't the faggot. I thought I told you to stay away, faggot. What, are you going to give the poofter a lesson, boys? I don't think so. Well, then you're going to stop us, are you? Hey? So what are the two of you doing here all alone anyway? You little poofter lover. You want a lesson as well, Cooper? I'd have a good hard think about that, Steve, if I was you. What are you looking after, little lover boy here? How are you going to do that? By charging you turkeys with assault. Stephen Petrenko. I'm arresting you for the assault on Warren Tully. Uh, you've got someone to see you. Yeah? yeah? I came by to pick up those witness statements. Well, I could have dropped them off. Oh, I was passing anyway. There's John, how are we... No, no, no. You, you, no. you first, you first, go on. All right. Um, you know you offered to buy me dinner sometime. Yeah, um... How about tonight? <laughs> 